Yo, you guys, I'm in the studio today with my good friend, NFL player Kelvin Beecham, who is a star killing it on the field and especially off the field, man. And I'm so excited because he decided to stop through Nashville, holler at Dave Ramsey and myself, and we're just going to talk about life, man. We're going to talk about how do we go after success, how do we build generational wealth for our families, and what's the importance of mentorship, man. This is some good stuff. I can't wait uh, because this man is wise and I'm telling you right now, you want to keep it locked. Kelvin, thank you so much for stopping by, bro. Thanks for having me, brother. Yo, keep it locked. Yo, man, welcome to the city. Yes, sir. Yo, so you do you like Nashville? It's nice. It's nice. nice. It's beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm from the country. Okay. Uh, uh, originally, so to be here and see all the greenery, okay. uh, see the hills, see some of the mountains, yeah, yeah. Uh, nice breeze, yeah, yeah, yeah. clean, yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's a great thing. So it's great to be here in Nashville. The hospitality is yeah. good here. The food is good from what I, what I can tell so far. So man. I'm here for a couple more hours so, and looking forward to enjoying it. A couple more hours, man. So you currently play right now uh, in New York for the New York Jets. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great one. Hey, we need you to recruit you to Nashville, Tennessee. Man, y'all got y'all just paid uh, Taylor LeJuan like 70 plus. Um, so y'all got plenty of money to give a tackle. Y'all just didn't choose to give it to me. It's all good. He made the Pro Bowl last year, so you got a Pro Bowl at left tackle. I'm going to call coach. Yeah, my, Mike Vrabel? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get you 80 million. <laughs> hey, that would be nice. <laughs> Yo, so, so let's go ahead and introduce you to the audience. For sure. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself, yeah. who you are, what you're doing, um, and what you're really passionate about. Yeah. Uh, originally from uh, Mahia, Texas. I okay. uh, went to SMU down in Dallas. Okay. I got drafted to Pittsburgh uh, in the 2012 draft. Okay. Played there for four years. I uh, was in Jacksonville four year where yeah. we have some synergies there in Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, and then I've been in New York for the past two years. Okay. Uh, really focused on two things uh, philanthropically. Yeah. Uh, one is ending hunger both domestically and worldwide. And then okay. the other uh, is finding ways to get young people involved in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or so STEM. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I've really been passionate about those things. And then on the business front, um, have started to kind of dive into the, the tech sector um, and finding ways, you know, personally uh, to kind of build generational wealth. Because yeah. the thing is, you don't hear about a lot of our people, uh, our people. that go into to investing in tech and not just, you know, uh, some clippers yeah. or some hair, which is great. Those are great. Great stuff. Great products, beauty products. But right. how do I go into some of those areas where you don't really see people that look like us? How yes. do you go look at companies in quantum computing? How do you go look at companies in enterprise software? How do you go look at drones and robotics, which are two areas that I'm, I'm really passionate about? I actually brought my drone with me. Are you um, serious? Man, I, I was coming from New York, so I had to bring the drone with me and fly it under the plane. Um, so I had to get it back to Arizona. <laughs> man, I love it. I love it. So let, let's talk about this a little bit more because I love exactly how you as an African-American man mm -hmm. uh, playing in the league and you are actually um, on a mission to help and inspire mm -hmm. young people, but then also grow more well so you can impact your kids kids it sounds yeah. like um where does that come from inside of you mm -hmm. i think first and foremost you talk about you know you, i think you have to start in the bible the bible says charity starts at home and then spreads abroad That's if you can't take care of what's going on in your household and you can't build that nest egg and find a way to build on build on what's going on in your house how can you go and uh, impact other people so for one it's been how do i take care of home first how do yes. i take care of my wife be yes. a great husband yeah. be a great father to my kids how do i take care of that first and then it's how do i then sow into the communities okay. and then the communities that have impacted me and that i've been a part of so one my hometown of Mahia, okay. uh the college city where i went to school at uh, in dallas um, where i played at so pittsburgh jacksonville and now uh new york and then finding ways to integrate into those communities and continue giving back into those communities that's good we was talking at lunch man and you was talking about how you just purchased a house. You rented for six years, yes. playing in the NFL, yeah. making your kind of money, and you're telling me you didn't buy a house? You didn't go out there and get, spend millions of dollars <laughs> throughout all these different uh, cities you've been in? Why is that? You know, I, I read one of Dave's books okay. um, uh, early on in my, my career. I think probably right around the time that I was getting out of college. Um, got my master's at, at SMU, was, so had the opportunity to start thinking about life differently. Had some time before I got drafted, um, and it just didn't make sense. You know, I was single at the time when I first got to the league. Why go buy a house um, when I first, you know, get drafted? I actually stayed with the family, well, a family in Pittsburgh for the first six months while I was there. You know, um, so actually just thought about ways in which I can be efficient with with what God had given me. Because the thing is, is yes, it's great to go and play in the National Football League, but if you're not a good steward 
of what he's given you, you've kind of dropped the ball in that in that sense. Um, so for one, it was making sure that I was taking care of what I needed to take care of, save as much as I could. Um, so, you know, started saving um, early on in my career. Even when I got married, my wife, you know, uh, came from humble beginnings as well. So it was, I didn't, you know, get connected to some some woman that wanted to go buy uh, Louis and Gucci and Red Bottoms. And I mean, did your wife have a sister? Uh, uh, she's already connected with oh. somebody, so I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I got a younger sister, but she may be a little too young for you. Um, but they, we all think the same. We all think the same. But I find you somebody. Thanks, I find man. I find you somebody. Appreciate you. I find you somebody. Appreciate um, you. But the thing is, is, is I wanted to make sure that I was equally yoked with somebody that thought much like I did, and, and we both. Or come from that background of, of finding ways to produce generational wealth and, and thinking through that on a daily basis. And you know, I, I, she was highly educated when when I when when we when we connected. Uh, I was a Baylor grad, mm -hmm. um, even though Baylor didn't recruit me. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I still make sure that uh, that she knows that. But got connected to a, a wonderful woman and Jessica. I've uh, been married for for six years now, so we were actually married while we were renting. Wow. And the thing is, with the NFL, it's so um, things can be moved. So fast, you can be in one city one year, another city in another year, and it actually happened to me. 2015, I blow my knee out. We're in Pittsburgh. The next year, we're in Jacksonville. The next year, I'm in New York, um, and and I still rent in the cities that I play in because there's no reason to buy buy there. And then the thing is, is sometimes people don't listen to the stories that other people have have either the experiences that they've had or situations that they've been a part of and people will tell you hey this is a, a poor decision that i made right here and it cost me x amount of money yeah. and for me I've, I've had an opportunity to hear from people like that that said hey don't buy in the city that you're playing in you don't know if you're gonna be there long term i thought i was gonna be a pittsburgh Steeler for all my life <laughs> it, it doesn't happen that right. way you know i thought i was gonna be in jacksonville for the next five years yeah. It didn't happen that way. I thought I was going, you know, I'm, I'm in New York, but I have no idea what God has for me, right. you know, coming after this. You know, it, it'd be nice to be in New York for the next five years, but realistically, is that going to happen? I don't know. So why buy in that particular location? So Arizona was where we spent a lot of our time during the off season. Yeah. So kind of made that home base. Um, like I said, after <laughs> six years of being in the National Football League. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. And it sounds like you're really focused on preparing for your future. Yes. And so let's talk about this because the average person watching right now is about 24 to 34 years old. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, in age, I'm in that age range. Me too. Mm -hmm. um, and they see celebrities, they see people um, on Instagram flexing. Mm -hmm. You know, they got the nice Stunning. cars. Yeah. Exactly. They got the nice houses. Mm -hmm. The guys got the nice looking ladies. The mm -hmm. ladies have the nice looking guys. Mm -hmm. um, but you and I know this. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff is fake. Mm -hmm. But that's the number one thing that I feel this generation is trying to keep up with. Mm -hmm. Speak to that for me. In your place, yeah. in your season of life, mm -hmm. what would you say to that 24 to 34 right now that is doing that? The percentage of people that are doing that? Or, like, or just speak to them to, who, who is doing that. If you're doing that, stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. It, it's no reason to live that life. You're going down a life of debt, uh, a, a life of regret. Um, because all that materialistic stuff, you know, you talk about idolatry, that's, that's, you, you're, you're trying to go and, and, and go after something that's not real, it has no substance. Yeah. Um, and that's not a life that you want to live, honestly. Um, and as it pertains to your finances, your pocketbooks, <laughs> you don't want to put your pocketbooks through those types of uh, those scenarios. Yeah, that's true. I was at the uh, school this morning. You and I was talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. um, had the opportunity to speak for the, the girls, African-American, mm -hmm. Um, intelligent network and it's a group of african-american young ladies who are like you know i want to go to college debt free i want to make the right decisions so after i get done speaking um it, it was a sad moment for me because i had a couple of females come up to me afterwards crying mm -hmm. saying you know i've never heard this information if i just only had someone in my life that would say, hey, you can go to college yeah. debt-free, you can be successful, you can be wealthy, mm -hmm. your kids can be wealthy, mm -hmm. but they're like, my parents, are, they don't really care. Yeah. You know, um, I feel bad mm -hmm. for these young African-American young ladies and being African-American, um, and maybe you can relate to this or not, um, it's not a black or white thing, but being, being African-American and knowing my culture, we don't have a lot of African American, African American men or women mm -hmm. really instilling into this next generation and trying to encourage them the way you are. Right. 
You know, for me, it's one, being an example. Yeah. Um, I think that's first and foremost. And then you talked about, you know, how some of, some of this particular generation, their parents are not there to, to kind of help them through those situations. My parents gave us one option. Mm -hmm. We're not paying for college. <laughs> you better find a, that's one option. <laughs> you better find a way to get there. Your grades better be right. Uh, don't bring home a C, because if we bring home a C in our community, there's something called a, uh, yes, I don't sir. know if y'all say, say that on, on TV, but whooping, beating, we got it all. Yeah. CPS will probably come out to my parents right now. Well, they're coming out to all four of mine. <laughs> 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 um, and if we brought on the sea, we, we knew what was going to happen. Yeah, you spare um, a rod, you spoil the child. Spoil child, exactly. <laughs> so it, it's one of those things where, for me, I had that type of upbringing. Yeah. So now it's like, all right, now I'm in this position that I'm, I'm older. I now have three kids. How do I make sure that they're on the right path? Mm. But then how do I also sow into generations that may come from mm. fatherless homes or mm. may come from motherless homes? How do, how do I sow into that generation? And the thing is, it's one thing to have somebody sow into your life. Yep. It's another thing to have a mentor. I think it's even another thing to have a champion and a sponsor. So there somebody you that will you go. mentor you, yeah. teach you some of the things that you're doing right, some of the things you're doing wrong. Somebody that can get you into certain doors and certain places, uh, can, can help you with some of the aspirations that you got. Yes. Open the door, yeah. keep the door open, yeah. and make sure you have a seat at the table. Because the thing is, is in our community, there, there hasn't really been opportunities to, to, to have a true seat at the table. And I think, you know, you think about what our president, uh, well, what Barack Obama did a couple yeah. years ago is kind of opening the door for, for people to kind of see our community in a different light. Um, I think that's been happening over the last, you know, a couple of decades, but yeah. I think it's starting to be um, this trend where we see it more often, but you can never see uh, a, a enough of our people um, in just the right settings. Um, being uh, the CEOs of, of Fortune 5 companies, yes. uh, being CFOs, CIOs, um, chief information officers, yeah. you know, general counsels, yeah. um, running, you know, uh, uh, tech unicorns and, yes. and billion dollar startups. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to, to hear about it. It's another thing to see it. And then it's another thing to actually shake their hand and actually have a very real relationship with them. Absolutely, and I think that's true, man. I love like what you're doing and when we think of um, other celebrities like what LeBron James mm -hmm. is doing with that school that he oh, just yeah. launched and it's how that's so needed yeah. in that culture and in that community. Mm -hmm. And so we both agree that mentorship and champions are needed in mm -hmm. our lives. And I have a mentor who look like me and some who don't look like me, Very true. Um, like Dave Ramsey. And so do you, we talked about yeah. that at lunch. And I think that's so important mm -hmm. for especially young men. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think men can teach us how to really be men and be better men. Exactly. And I think that's so important. This is great info, man, because I'm telling you, we can sit here and talk all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, next time you're in town or if I'm in your city, we're going to just do a live stream and just take Perfect. questions. Cool. And just impact and really inspire. But what I want you to do is I'm all about inspire, aspire, and just give them some quality things, practical things that they can take and apply to their life now. Mm -hmm. And so to this 24 to 34 year old or 18 year old that's watching mm -hmm. right now, they're looking at you saying, okay, he's successful. He's sharp, he's a family man, he's winning. Um, he has mentors, he's mentoring. Um, how do I get myself to that level of success? Mm -hmm. What are two things that they can practically do today mm -hmm. to start that path in their life? Would it be possible if I gave one spiritual and two practical? Man, Would that be cool? Man, this is my channel. Y'all know me. I'm a preacher, man. Let's go. <laughs> so first and foremost, I think you really need to develop a prayer life. Okay. And a true prayer cadence. Mm -hmm. If you can be on Snapchat, Instagram, IG, Facebook, LinkedIn, you should have a dedicated time to have a prayer life. That's you and your time to communicate with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Allow the Holy Spirit to come in and really work on you. First thing. That's first thing. All right. Number two. If you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. <laughs> Say that again. I if like that you one. can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. Now, the reason I say that because I'm looking at some land down in Texas. It's, okay. it's kind of north of seven figures. Okay. If I can't buy it twice, it's not for me right now. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, that's. So if you're looking at this Louis bag and if you, you can't, can't buy, buy it twice, twice Lou, you might have to do it three times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then I think the last thing, and this is this is this is a little, a little bonus for you. Okay. Um, and I don't think we talk about it enough, but own your time. Like, like really own your time. Don't allow people to take over your schedule, take over your time. 
Everybody has 24 hours in a day. Right. Now, what you choose to do with your 24 hours is your prerogative. But I think we as a people don't realize how important it is to own our time. And I'm not talking about, well, I can't go to this basketball game or I can't go to this sporting event or, 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 or go to this museum or go hang out with friends. All I'm saying is develop, you know, some, some parameters or some boundaries around your time. You know, if you're catching up with some friends, make it. 45 minutes. Mm. If you grabbing, you know, grabbing a meal with somebody that, that that happens to be in town, make it an hour and 30 minutes. Like have some boundaries around your time. It used to be put it like this. It used to be a time where I used to take calls and it'd be, it used to be an hour, hour long. Okay. I'm like, I can't be taking business calls and Nate <laughs> an hour long. If you can't tell me about your business and how we can uh, have some synergies together in 15, 20 minutes, we don't need to be talking. Yeah. I mean, we ain't doing we ain't, we ain't doing the right business together. So right. to own your time, I think is something that we don't really talk about a lot. Um, but ownership of time is so important. Uh, time is going away. Yeah. You know, once once you come out of your mother's womb, it's, it's an expiration date that only God knows. Yeah. So it's being able to own every every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month of your time. And, and one thing you got to have is being able to own that time. You know, that's so true, man. I want to echo that because my mentor, Dave Ramsey, says he budgets his time like he budgets his money. Exactly. And so, you know, his time is his money. money. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, I agree with you on that one, man. I, I, when I'm dating, hey, you got to be worth my time because <laughs> that's money you taking up. <laughs> Yo, so how can people find you on social Social media, website, what yep. you're doing, yep. what are those outlets? Yep, uh, website, KelvinBeecham.com. Okay. Okay. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn are all uh, Kelvin Beecham Jr. Okay. Um, keep it all simple. Uh, I try to keep uh, my fans engaged. Yes. Uh, I, I'm a family man, so I try to post about my family quite often, even on my wife, you know, how I want you posting about the baby, like leave them pictures <laughs> off. Of yes, ma'am. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. There you um, go. But uh, I, I try to engage with my fans as much as I care. There you go. They like me. Hey, follow him. Man, I'm telling you, solid guy. There's going to be a, probably a lot of fake accounts out there. He got the blue check marks, um, <laughs> but uh, check them out, you guys. And you know what? Leave us a comment below. Let me know one thing that you're taking away from this. What, what is one thing that you're going to apply to go after your dreams to start thinking about your generational wealth that you can form for your family? Uh, because I want to know, and I want to pray over them for you. Yo. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yes, sir. You are the man.com, man. I like this guy. <laughs> we'll see him again.